Hello everyone, welcome to Field Notes, an exploration of functional medicine. I'm Rob Downey, a family practice MD and Institute for Functional Medicine certified practitioner. I'm coming to you from Seaworthy Functional Medicine in Homer, Alaska. Seaworthy exists to help people overcome their health challenges and be fully vital. Today, we are fortunate enough to have with us a luminary of functional medicine, Dr. Tom O'Brien. Hello, Tom. Hello there, Dr. Downey. Nice to see you. What time of the day is it where you are? Uh, it is 310. Uh, so we're on the same time zone as Denver, currently Mountain Standard Time. Got it. Got it. No, well, no, good I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, during, during the summer, it's the same time zone as Chicago. So it's Central Standard Time. But, there, you know, because I um, got it confused for a while and didn't know about the time zone change and making appointments. You know, we'd be an hour late or an hour early. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're, we're on Chicago time right now. Well, it's a good afternoon to you then across time zones and midday for, for us here in Alaska. So the, the challenge I've noticed with, with luminaries is if I summarize their or if I explicated their bio fully, then there's no room left for the interview. So I'll do the thumbnail sketch and please add to it anything that I miss or if it needs to be recharacterized. So you've helped people with autoimmunity as a doctor for many, many years. And then pivotal moments were the 2016 book, The Autoimmune Fix, and the accompanying docu-series, Half a Million People Have Watched That Betrayal about learning more about autoimmunity, its genesis, how to treat it. Then in 2019, the book about fixing your brain. And uh, in parallel with all of that, your faculty for Institute for Functional Medicine and other teaching components to what you do, thousands of medical providers have been educated by you. And then the various programs that you offer, including a lot of detail about how gluten is such a, a potent uh, disruptor of our immune system, you you founded the Gluten Summit, and and so today it's just such a great thing to get to share your wisdom with with our audience. Thanks, thanks a ton. Thank you so much. It's really a pleasure, you know. And um, I think it's what's really important when people have a um, health concern that the things that they're doing aren't quite getting the job done that they'd like to get done. And they've tried, they've really tried, or they've gone to their doctors and they've tried the pharmaceuticals or tried the nutraceuticals, the vitamins, and they might feel a little better, but things aren't going right yet. What's critically important, like never before in history, is that people have to take a step back and ask, why is this happening to me? Why? Mm -hmm. And you won't know the answer. But in asking the question, it sends you down a road, you know, a journey, if you will, to explore and understand. And you'll have your jaw dropped again and again and again. You know, when you hear that 247 pounds of chemicals are manufactured or imported into the United States, states every day per person per day it's 27 trillion pounds a year which is a number that i can't relate to but i divided that number by the population of the united states and then developed divided that by 365 days in the year and it's 247 pounds per person per day mm. now well, why is that important? Because we now know that every newborn baby has at least 200 chemicals in their bloodstream at birth that aren't supposed to be there. And many of them are neurotoxins, many of them. So when in, you ask the question, what is autoimmunity? Uh, your immune system, so as you ask the question and then why do I have autoimmunity? You learn that your immune system is the armed forces in your body. It's there to protect you. There's an army, a navy, a coast guard, a marines, 
and Air Force. We call them IGA, IGG, IGE, IGM. They're different branches of the armed forces there to protect you. So when your immune system is making antibodies that attack your own tissue, you ha and that's what autoimmunity is when your immune system's attacking your brain or attacking your thyroid or attacking your joints or attacking your skin. And we call that um, Alzheimer's or Hashimoto's thyroid disease or psoriasis or rheumatoid. But it's your immune system attacking your own tissues. And you ask the question, why? Now, that's where I started, you know, to ask the question, why on this journey? And when you start learning the why, that it's not an immune system that's gone crazy. It's an immune system that's really trying to protect you. So the question is, what's it trying to protect you from? So I'll give you the example of Hashimoto's thyroid disease, uh, which many, many people have. Arguably, it's the number one autoimmune disease in the uh, industrialized world. Just go to Google and type in BPA, those three letters, BPA. And many of us have heard of that. That's one of the chemicals used to mold plastic. So it's in plastic water bottles. So when you drink the water from a plastic water bottle, you're getting BPA. It's in the plastic lid on your coffee cup. And when the heat the steam from the hot coffee goes up and it condenses on the underside of the lid and it drips back down into the coffee full of BPA. And you put the coffee cup up to your lips and that hot liquid hits the underside of the lid and it tapers down into the opening that you drink from and it's full of BPA. And type in BPA and thyroid. And you see all the studies that show for some people BPA grabs onto your thyroid. And when that chemical grabs on your thyroid, that thyroid cell that it grabs onto is no longer a part of the normal you. You know, it's not the normal thyroid cell. It's the geek term is it's a neo epitope. It's a new cell. And your immune system says, whoa, what's that? That's not a thyroid cell. I better fight that. And your immune system attacks that neo-epitope. When the immune system attacks the neo-epitope, you damage the thyroid cell. It's called collateral damage. When you have damaged thyroid cells, well, when you do a blood test for thyroid antibodies, why is there a normal reference range? There's always a normal range for antibodies to your thyroid or antibodies to your nerves or antibodies to your brain or antibodies to your joints or to your heart. Why would you have a normal amount of antibodies to your own body? Why would the immune system do that? Because Mrs. Patient, you have an entire new body every seven years. Every cell in your body regenerates except your teeth every single cell. Some are really fast, like the lining of your nose, the lining of your gut. Every few days you got new, new lining. And some cells are really slow, like bone cells. But how does that happen? Your body makes antibodies, the immune system gets activated, to make antibodies to get rid of the old and damaged thyroid cells, to make room for new cells. That's how we make room right? It's called apoptosis, another geek word, where these old cells get taken out of there, get them out of there. So there's room for new thyroid cells. That's why when you do a blood test, there's a normal reference range. But when you have elevated levels of antibodies to your thyroid, you're killing off more cells than you're making. And that goes on for years and years and years. You can't tell, you don't feel it until one day you start noticing that you got cold hands and feet most of the time, or you're wearing socks to bed. Your husband says your feet are cold in bed and you touch his legs, his legs are nice and warm, or you feel sluggish. You don't have the energy that you should have, or 
you hit the snooze in the morning six times, seven times, because you just can't get out of bed. Those are all thyroid symptoms because you've been killing off thyroid cells for a long time. And now eventually the thyroid can't work as well as it should. And you start getting some symptoms. And if that progresses and progresses and pro more antibodies to your thyroid, more antibodies to your thyroid, more antibodies to your thyroid, eventually the thyroid works so poorly, you have to go to a doctor. And if you're lucky, you, you get a diagnosis because most autoimmune diseases take years to get the right diagnosis after you start going to the doctor. But you get the diagnosis, you have Hashimoto's autoimmune disease. So if you ask the question why, then you learn about bisphenol A and you start reducing the bisphenol A that you're exposed to in your life. And you learn about gluten, just go on Google and type in gluten and thyroid. And here come all the studies that for some people, it's wheat that's the main trigger causing more antibodies to their thyroid or to their skin with psoriasis or to their joints with rheumatoid. You know, it just depends on your genetics as to where it's going to manifest. But the takeaway from this first part, and I know I'm giving you a lot of information, but it really is. This causes this, causes this, causes this, causes this. And then you go to the doctor with these symptoms and they say, well, you've got that autoimmune thyroid disease. It's called Hashimoto's. Take this drug for the rest of your life. And there's nothing wrong with taking the medication. If you need the medication, you take it. But you have to ask the question, why? And if you ask most doctors, well, why do I have Hashimoto's? Well, it's just genetic. Some people get this and that's how it is. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. That doctor just hasn't read my books or re read the research papers or taking the courses to really have a bigger picture. That's why you need someone like you, <laughs> Dr. Downey, you know, <laughs> our functional medicine practitioners to help people find the answers to the question, why? And that's the critically important thing to understand about autoimmune diseases or any disease. I mean, nobody gets Alzheimer's overnight. Absolutely nobody. Uh, it's a decades long disease. There are many, many, many studies that identify the different stages of this over decades. But you don't feel when you're killing off brain cells. You don't feel it. But every time you pump gas, can you sometimes smell the gas, Dr. Downey, when you're when you pump gas, when you fill the tank? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're smelling benzene. <laughs> benzene is a neurotoxin. It kills brain cells. So you inhale benzene, it goes right up to your brain, causes inflammation, and it's killing brain cells every single time. And people say, well, I don't feel bad when I pump gas. Well, all right. Give me once a week, if you fill your tank, that's 50 times a year. Give me 20, 30 years of that with the thousand or so brain cells, and I'm making up the number that you kill off every time you smell benzene. Now give me 20 years of that or 30 years of that. Mm -hmm. Now you got a problem. Mm -hmm. And that is, so it's this world of environmental toxins that are in our food, in our air, in our environment, that get inside our body. Every newborn child in America has 200 chemicals in their bloodstream at birth that aren't supposed to be there, that get inside our body and our immune system trying to protect you makes antibodies to fight them and the collateral damage causes the autoimmune diseases. That is the mm -hmm. most, now that's a PhD level answer to your question. But I try to do it in a way that people can see the step by step by step by step. And when, when you ask the question why, then you start doing the little things that it takes to reduce the amount of inflammation in your body. Right. And, and to add, there's so much I'd love to add and underscore and emphasize, but a couple of the things that I think are most important are that, uh, if people get to the point they've got a diagnosed disease, then they can decrease their burden of disease by avoiding these exposures or helping their immune system be better supported. And so many people now are interested in not 
having these diseases develop so they can use your approach and functional medicine approaches to uh, not have the other shoe drop. So we get the joy of knowing that, that, that they won't have these things happen. And then there's a real compassion in recognizing our immune system isn't attacking us like some deranged monster. Our poor immune system is just, you know, getting hammered. And I think compassion is a really important part of this too. That's a really valid point because when you develop compassion for your body and what it's going through, you take some of the stress out. I mean, you, you might be suffering right now, but, but you understand a little more about the why of where it's coming from. And then you understand, all right, this is a six month journey. All right, this is a year journey. So I, don't, I better not expect to be well next week, but I wanna take the baby steps. So every step I take is getting me closer to that end point of healthy thyroid function or healthy skin function or mm -hmm. healthy blood cell count or whatever the target is that you want to do. When you have compassion for yourself, what happens is that you're more engaged, you're more empowered, and you kind of get turned on as you learn a little more. Now, many people get so upset when they learn all of this. Well, how could our government do this? How could they allow this? Well, they got paid off by the lobbyists and they passed legislation. I'll give you an example. The Toxic Substance Control Act is the regulation that governs the introduction of chemicals into the United States, whether they're manufactured here or imported and it's 247 pounds per person per day. And that, those regulations, that act, which is the current govern, governing regulations, was passed in 1976. And it is so cumbersome that in close to 35 years, it's only regulated five chemicals or five classes of chemicals in 35 years. And there's thousands of chemicals literally introduced every year that the manufacturers don't have to prove that these things are dangerous. What they have to prove is that the amount that you're exposed to in a water bottle of bisphenol A, what they have to show is that that's not toxic. Mm -hmm. Now there's no evidence that the amount of bisphenol A that leaches out of plastic water bottles is toxic to humans. That's how they get away with this crap, excuse me. But that's how they get away with it. But this stuff is accumulative in your body. Mm -hmm. Let, let mm -hmm. me give you an example. This really puts it in perspective. Bisphenol A, BPA, is part, one of the chemicals in the family called phthalates. Phthalates are the chemicals used to mold plastic. Uh, the plastic on the tripod stand that's holding the light here that's shining on me, the plastic that's holding the frame uh, or the frame of my iPod, the plastic of the lamp here on the counter, the plastic of the blinds, phthalates are used to make all those different kinds of plastics. We're all exposed to them every single day. They did a study in Chicago a few years ago, 346 pregnant women. In the eighth month of pregnancy, they collected the urine and they measured how many phthalates, total phthalates, do these women have in their body, in, in their urine, meaning they're eliminating it. And they only looked at five phthalates, and there are thousands, but they, they looked at five, including bisphenol A. And they took the results for each person and they put them into quartiles, the lowest fourth, the next, the third, and the highest fourth. They then followed the children of these offspring for seven years. When the kids turned seven years old, they did Wexler IQ tests on them, the official IQ test. Mm -hmm. Now, there's not much in medicine that's all or every. This was every. Every child 
whose mother was in the highest quartile of phthalates in urine in pregnancy, compared to the children whose mothers were in the lowest quartile, every child in the highest quartile, their IQ was seven points lower than the kids in the lowest quartile of phthalates in urine. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean anything to anyone until you realize that a one point difference in IQ is noticeable. A seven point difference is a difference between a kid working really hard, getting straight A's, and a kid working really hard, getting straight C's. This kid doesn't have a chance in hell to do fabulous in school because their brain never developed properly because mom had so many phthalates in her urine during pregnancy when the brain's developing. Every mm -hmm. newborn child has over 200 chemicals at birth that aren't supposed to be there. Then you just go to Google and type in phthalates, P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S, phthalates and neurogenesis, nerve growth. Here come the studies where in the laboratories they show that phthalates inhibit nerve growth. That's what's happening to our babies. But it's the amount of toxic chemicals that mom is exposed to and mom has in her body. Our, unfortunately, our young women today are walking sewage dumps. I don't like to say it like that, but I've got to wake you up. Just look for yourself. You know, just read for yourself and you will say, oh my God, I had no idea. When you learn that nail polish, within five minutes of applying nail polish, the phthalates are in your bloodstream. Now there's no evidence that the amount of phthalates that leach out of the nails when applying nail polish is toxic to humans. That's how they get away with this. Mm -hmm. When you learn that your leftover food that you put in plastic storage containers in the refrigerator, the next day when you eat that chicken, it's got phthalates in it. Now there's no evidence that the amount of phthalates that leach out of plastic storage containers into the food left in the refrigerator overnight is toxic to humans. But it's accumulative again and again and again. Now give me 20 years. Most girls start using nail polish about five or six years old in the US. Give me 25 years of that. Give me 20 years or 15 years of pumping gas and smelling the benzene the formaldehyde that's in the kitchen cabinets if they're not solid wood and in the bathroom cabinets if they're press board not solid wood those those cabinets leach out formaldehyde for years well i don't smell anything well there's no evidence that the amount of formaldehyde that you smell that's in your house that's leaching out of your cabinets is toxic to humans but all of this stuff accumulates and your immune system trying to protect you is working as hard as it can. That is a primary mechanism in the development of autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I find that the folks that, when that's illuminated, one important thing happens, they know now that something needs to be done. They, right. they, they it's a call to action. And, uh, Again, from a perspective of compassion, I try to warn them that as the full magnitude of this information hits them, uh, I think that the word betrayal from your docu-series may well be the best word. Uh, there's this sort of sickening uh, feeling for them. And so I try to give them a sense of momentum through this, that if they access the resources from you and other thought leaders, then they can start to decrease the burden and support the body's detox pathways and relieve the immune system and, and feel and do better. Because my observation over 14 years in functional medicine is there's no more chilling aspect of learning for patients than cumulative toxicity. So they need a sense of momentum through it that, and I, as we uh, learn from you about this, I wanted to briefly mention that uh, compassion stands out in every minute I've ever experienced of you, whether it's uh, at one of the functional medicine training modules or watching your other content or watching your Facebook live. And I think it's, uh, it's just such a powerful thing people should know if they access their, your materials because 
it's, it's just such a critical part, I think, of helping each person that their educator or their healer, you know, has the heart. Uh, and I find that sometimes they really need to kind of hear from my heart in the room, like, you're going to be okay, you're going to get through this. <laughs> it's a really good point. You know, it's a critical point. Uh, because it's overwhelming. And this is, I mean, it's like people are being told they have to learn Greek. You know, they've got to understand a new language because we've trusted our legislators, we've trusted our doctors, and unfortunately, the doctors don't know this. They, they, it's, a, it's a big picture view, and most doctors don't know this. For the first time in history now, I believe that all of us have to have this much attention every day on detoxification. Every day, not, not once in the summer and once in the winter, you know, or a New Year's resolution, or I'm gonna do a one week, just vegetable juice fast, or whatever your thing is, you know, that it's not a once a year thing, it's a once a day thing. You know, and the most important, if there's one most important, it is in terms of what you do, in terms of implementation, we'll talk about a bunch of things here today. But the first thing, everybody wakes up in the morning, usually the first thing they do is they go to the bathroom, most people. The very next thing you have to do is drink two big glasses of water right away. And you'll notice your whole life, your body changes within three, four days. Within a week, your body changes. All of a sudden, your bowel movements are better. You know, it's like, well, I'm going to date myself now. And Dr. Downey, you'll join me in this one. But, <laughs> you know, when we, first, when we first got a driver's license, you know, we were driving cars. And every once in a while, you've got to, you know, you fill the tank. But you also have to check the oil. And you'd have to lift the caps off the batteries to make sure there's enough water in the batteries. You know, it's not true anymore, but that was the case a number of years ago. The water in the batteries allows the electricity to go through the body, to go through the car. The water in your body, when you're hydrated well enough, allows your brain to talk, your nervous system to communicate, your lymphatics to flush and care, escort. Your lymphatics are the garbage trucks. You know, the big trucks that go down the street, one guy's driving, one guy is riding the back end and he jumps off to grab your garbage can and dump it in there and all that. Your lymphatic system is the garbage trucks in your body. And they all come and they dump it into the thoracic duct uh, up here, you know, from all over the body, the lymphatics dump it there. But if you don't have enough water, you're driving a garbage, your, your garbage trucks are driving with the emergency brake three quarters of the way on. Meaning they can't drive the speed they're supposed to drive. They're not gonna get through all the neighborhoods in one day that they're supposed to get through. They can't, the emergency brakes on. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you have to do is make sure you're hydrated well enough. Which, and you start with two big glasses of, whoa, I'll be up. And you have to, it's one third to one half ounce of water per pound body weight. Mm -hmm. And people say, so if you weigh 150 pounds, so that's 50 to 75 ounces of water a day, like about a half a gallon. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'll be peeing all day. That's the idea. <laughs> You know, you've, got to flush, <laughs> you've got to flush this stuff out of there. We've got to get all, all this crud out of there yeah. that's been accumulating over the years. Yeah, you know, absolutely. What, you, what you'll notice is that sometimes your urine's going to smell, and it usually doesn't, but it will, or your bowel movements are going to smell, and you haven't eaten anything weird. And when patients would say that, oh, so, that's great, congratulations, and they look at me and say, that means you're getting rid of this old toxic crud that's been accumulated in your body for a long time. Keep it up. Yeah. Keep it up. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Well, and then, uh, and then the, uh, the thing that's made me, uh, as I think about mastery level functional medicine providers and how to try to bring that to my practice, a big aha moment for me over the last three years was that 
there's so many dimensions of lifestyle. A, nothing else works without the lifestyle. The supplements and tests don't do anything without lifestyle. But secondly, then so many things get fixed that the person doesn't have to know that they're being fixed for them to be fixed. So they learn from you or Institute for Functional Medicine that the colored plants, and fruits and vegetables support detoxification. And it just so happens they're also feeding their good gut bacteria and they're also restoring gut barrier integrity. So they're decreasing leaky gut. And there's these multifold benefits. And, and I'll find that people think, oh, I need a detox supplement or something like that for all this horrible stuff I learned from IFM or from Dr. O'Brien that's building up in my body. But those whole foods that aren't laden with pesticides, they just right away start cleaning the the garbage out, sort of any and all, the body starts hunting it down. I think that again is some of the good news people need about clean whole food. You know, when, um, it's a good point. When someone goes to college and let's say they like English, so they want to major in English, it could be anything, but where do you start? You start with 101. You take the 101 courses and the first trimester and second trimester is 102. And then in your second year, you take the 201 courses and then the 202, 203, third year, the 301, and then the 401 courses. So there's a sequence you follow. The same is true with detox. And you don't have to start with all of these fancy detox programs and these fancy detox products. I mean, they're, they're helpful. But you start with 101. I mean, you, you can't take, a, well, you can, but it's, you're going to have problems often if you take a 401 detox product and you haven't done 101 yet. You're still dehydrated, mm -hmm. right? You're going you're gonna to mm -hmm. get it backed up. You're going to mobilize this stuff out of your bones or out of your brain. And well, like women, let's say, um, I'll give you a natural example of unwanted detox that occurs. Uh, women who have had a very stressful life and they uh, fatigue their adrenal glands so they don't have a lot of energy in their middle ages. You know, they're doing okay, but not great. And as they go through a change of life and the ovaries shut down, it's the job of the adrenal glands to start making estrogen and they make about one-tenth the estrogen that the ovaries made, which is just enough to keep your bones strong and your brain working and your heart um, doing well, cardiovascular system. But if your adrenal glands are worn down and incapable of responding as a woman goes through a change and her ovaries are shutting down, what happens is that you develop estrogen deficiencies. When you develop estrogen deficiencies, you start losing bone cells because there's not enough estrogen for your bone cells to stay strong and make new bone cells. When you start losing bone cells, the crud that's been deposited in your bones over the last 30 years, because when there's toxins in your bloodstream, the brain says, get this off the highway, because your bloodstream is just a highway. It's all it is. Everything's going the same direction. There's no lanes of traffic, but it's just a highway. And the brain says, get this stuff out of here. So phthalates go into your fat cells and your thyroid and other areas. Toxic metals like lead go into your bones. But now a woman going through a change has a uh, insufficient response of the adrenals. And so she starts losing more bone cells. That's called osteopenia, which is on the path to osteoporosis. As those brain, uh, bone cells are breaking down, the lead gets released back into the bloodstream that you've been storing, trying to keep it away from everything for 30 years because lead was in, lead's in milk and lead's in a lot of, and you and I grew up chewing on lead pencils and uh, so many other things. So the lead is being released from the bones. It's now in the bloodstream. And where does it have an affinity for? The brain. 
So middle-aged women, after they go through a change of life, often see an acceleration in brain fog and a loss in cognitive function. It often is partially or substantially contributed to by heavy metal poisoning. And they've not been exposed to more heavy metals in the last couple of years, but it's been in their body and it's been released because the adrenals aren't working because the ovaries have shut down like they're supposed to but the adrenals are supposed to kick in but they don't so there's an estrogen deficiency bone cells break down faster than they're being made the lead gets back into the bloodstream and it goes to the brain yeah this causes this causes this causes this causes that mm-hmm. connecting the dots so the 101 I... yeah so the 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 101 Drink enough water so whatever's in your bloodstream can be flushed out and your lymphatics, whatever your lymphatics, the garbage trucks pick up can be flushed out of there. That's 101. You Mm -hmm. got to do the 101 first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for both explications, the one at the beginning of today's conversation and that one, because those vignettes, I think, allow people then to intuit parallels to related cases. It gives people a sense then well, if this is the case with this and I learn the functional medicine approach for such and such, again, I can, I can uh, uh, have success. And it's worth noting that you and I both have the joy of seeing so many people who have been fatalistic at the beginning of their trajectory. Uh, because again, they're sort of under the spell that this just came, yes. whatever their trouble is, it came from some mysterious place. So then when their root cause analysis comes into focus, and they act on it. And my favorite ones are the ones who do lifestyle and then the specific testing and supplements, pow, it's just like the spark hitting the chamber. The uh, degree of radiance and vitality they manifest is just uh, shockingly wonderful over and over again to them and, and still to me, I never, I never tire of it. <laughs> yes, neither do I, neither do I. And we, we get a lot of um, correspondence from people who have watched Betrayal and watched some of the other programs. And once they apply some of these principles, it's it's an OMG again Mm -hmm. and again. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you know, I started this, I started this because I had some dandruff, but, but my, you know, I lost 15 pounds and my joints feel better than they've felt in years. And (laughs) sex is better with my husband and, you know, all these different things that, you see that when the body, because the body always wants to function well, it always mm-hmm. wants to. Mm-hmm. It's only the emergency brakes that we put on it. You know, mm-hmm. if you ever back out of the driveway and you know you say, "What's wrong with this car? It's moving, but it's not moving very well." Oh, the emergency brake, and you let go of the emergency brake, and then you back up completely. <laughs> That's what happens with your body when you take the emergency brake off. It wants to be healthy. It right. wants to build. healthier, younger, stronger cells. Right. And what happens when you do this type of approach, what happens is six months from now, eight months from now, you go to church and somebody says, Kathy, hi, I haven't seen you. My God, you look so different. You look (laughs) so much younger. What happened to you? And you could say, well, actually I am younger. My body was functioning at a 6.4 on a scale of one to 10, but I'm functioning at a 7.6 now because I've done detox and I started taking some nutrients and I eat the rainbow diet and I got um, the lead out of my bones and got it out of my body, you know, whatever it should be. But (laughs) you could actually have a conversation with your friends in church because you've learned all of these things over the last six, eight months and you see the results and and you live with the results. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a linger longer moment right there. Mm, I love that. Well, I want to be respectful of your time. There were two things I was briefly hoping we could do. One would be to uh, have you comment on, on brain health and have people know that there's a Fix Your Brain um, uh, you know, service, uh, part of your array of things you offer people can connect with. And, and then uh, any, maybe if you just share one piece of advice for people during the pandemic, you know, how do uh, people's financial resources are torpedoed or they're not sleeping because they've been geographically displaced or they're overwhelmed with grief due to the loss of someone, you know, how did they, how did they protect their immune system during this kind of uh, storm of, 
of change? Really good questions. Sure, let's do the brain first. Um, this is my more recent book, You Can Fix Your Brain. And if you can see the subtitle there, it's just one hour a week to the best memory, productivity, and sleep you've ever had. And it's not a cutesy subtitle. It's the only way to be successful for all of this stuff is that you're, you're going to be overwhelmed as you start discovering the answers to why. You will be overwhelmed by it. That's normal. So how do you not become a deer in the headlights, you know, and just mm -hmm. froze? How, how do you, how do, you um, do that? You allocate one hour a week, every Tuesday night after dinner, every Sunday after services, whenever it is, but every week you tell your family, hi, this is my time to study a little bit on how we can all be healthier. You know, grandma had cancer and mom had Alzheimer's and that's not gonna happen to us. So I'm gonna learn more of what we can do. I'm gonna spend an hour every week. And then you go to my book, as an example, because Dr. Brian talked about those plastic you know, Tupperware containers. And, and so you go to the book for glass storage containers and you look up the three URLs, mileskimble.com, Amazon, and whatever the third one is, I don't remember. And you go look and you say, oh, those are, oh, I like those. I really like those. So you order three round ones and two square ones and one for the pies, you know, you pay with your credit card, you hit send, you're done. That took an hour. That's it. What, what, that's it? Yeah, that's it for the week. Because never again will you poison your family unknowingly by giving them leftovers stored in plastic containers. Mm -hmm. And then next week, you go back in the book and you look for the URLs for organic cosmetics and organic nail polish. And you go look and you find them and you order one took an hour, great, you ordered it, it comes and you try it, you really don't like it. You know, you like your old stuff, but you don't want to use the old stuff. So you look for more, you now are experienced of how to look for, you now know what you're looking for. You're gonna fall on your face sometimes. You know, the stuff you try is not gonna work, but you don't let it stop you because you know, all right, that's not the nail polish I want. I'll find another nail polish, but now you're looking. And I've got a slide that I use in many of my talks now. I was driving down the street in North Side of Chicago one day, visiting my daughter. I was on one of the main um, streets that lots of stores on both sides of the street. And I saw the store, organic nails, phthalate free. And I pulled over and I took a picture of, you know, the big picture window. And, you know, I show it on, in my talks that there are services out there, but if you don't know to look for them, you're not going to look for them. Yeah. So you'll find, you'll find what you want. So every week, one hour in six months, you've changed your lifestyle because <laughs> you've learned a little bit about this and then a little bit about this and then a little bit about this. And that's how you're successful in changing lifestyle. This is not New Year's resolution stuff. Mm -hmm. This is a methodology at your pace. You might want to do one hour twice a week, you know, if you want, that's fine. But the concept is just be kind to yourself, you know, just a little bit at a time. And, in, and when you go to betrayal, you know, and watch, um, we interviewed 85 people from around the world. My wife and I went to seven countries and I interviewed the godfathers in autoimmunity, the scientists who were publishing cutting edge papers. And then we interviewed the doctors who were applying the principles that the scientists were writing about. And then we interviewed the patients of the doctors who were compliant and following the recommendations and reversing their rheumatoid, reversing their chronic fatigue, reversing their major depression, reversing their anxiety, re reversing their psoriasis, reversing their MS, I'll never forget the woman, 44 year old woman in London. And she said, you know, I took the tube to come here today. And that's the underground train. Mm -hmm. And she said, and I walked the seven blocks from the tube station here to the hotel. She said, it's not a big deal. And then she got all misty eyed and said, 
but it is. And then we show you the picture of her two years ago in a wheelchair. She can't walk at all. And her MRI, seven lesions on her brain. And here mm -hmm. she is today, two years later, no symptoms whatsoever, and only two lesions left on her brain. Mm. You reverse the lesions on the brain because every cell in your body regenerates. You just learn how to regenerate healthier cells. And, but it, it, if I had told her, if I hadn't have told her, you know, uh, well, she wasn't my patient, but if the doctor hadn't told her or in the patients that I see and that you see, Mrs. Patient, this is going to take a year to two years. But, but you stay with this and mm -hmm. baby steps along the way. If she didn't have that understanding and that belief and was expecting well, I'll take the pill and I'm not better in two weeks. And then you may, all right, I'll renew the pills once more, you know, and then I, I'm done with that. Then you stay stuck with whatever the, the physiology problems are. So the concept is one hour a week to the best memory, to the best joint function, to the best skin, whatever it is that you want to deal with. And in my book, I focused on the brain because we're all terrified about our brain. The Alzheimer's Association tells us now it's one elder in three that dies with dementia, mm. with Alzheimer's or another dementia, one out of three. That means, Dr. Uh, Downey, between you and me and you, the listener, one of the three of us are going down with Alzheimer's. And it ain't going to be me. Right? <laughs> I'm doing everything I can to make sure that's not going to happen. But that's how bad it is because the brain is the yellow canary in the coal mine. Mm -hmm. Meaning the symptoms show here first. When you're inflamed, when your body's inflamed, killing off cells, killing off cells, brain cells are very common. So I wanted to talk about one test for your brain, if I may. Great. Because this is a game changer. This is just a game changer. I read a paper in Science Magazine that said they did a study on 49-year-old people and that if you had lost or if you were losing your sense of smell, not that it was gone, but if you were losing your sense of smell, the geek term is hyposmia, losing your sense of smell, at 49, you had a 46% increased risk of dying within the next five years of something mm -hmm. compared to people who had not lost their sense of smell. I read that and I couldn't believe it. What? So I read some more studies in the references at the back of that. I found out who the top guy was in the world, Dr. Richard Doty, University of Pennsylvania. They have the, uh, uh, the smell center there. I called him, I introduced myself. I said, hi, this is Dr. Tom O'Brien from the Institute of Functional Medicine. He said, functional medicine, what's that? And we started talking, he got really excited. He said, oh, that's very cool. That's really <laughs> something. I said, so this smell thing, is this for real? And he said, yeah, absolutely. And he sent me a number of papers and he wrote two textbooks on it. And I saw how important this was. And you know, Dr. Downey, in our training, in our five day training at the Institute for Functional Medicine, we give everybody four little smell cards, you know, to taste and, or to mm -hmm. smell and to see, okay, can you smell this? What do you think this is? Mm -hmm. So that the entire audience sees how frequently people have hyposmia and don't know it. Mm -hmm. So I worked with Dr. Doty at the University of Pennsylvania, and we put together the smell identification test. Ah, cool. And what you do is like a lottery card, you just scratch the little thing on the bottom, and it asks you, is this tomato, menthol, strawberry, or licorice? And then you mark your answer right here with a pencil or a pen. Then you turn the page and you do the next one. You scratch it. And is it cherry, uh, uh, honey, lime, or whiskey? And you mark it here in the yellow box. And then you turn the page and you do the next one for 12 pages. Mm -hmm. Then here's the answer sheet. So you score it immediately. 
Mm -hmm. And if you score nine or less, you got hyposmia. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you have the same body as your ancestors thousands of years ago. You're the same body. And the sense of smell is extremely acute in humans compared to most animals. Our sense, there's more nerves here than anywhere. And there's more stem cells, Dr. Downey, in the olfactory epithelium than anywhere else in the body so that you keep regenerating these cells so they're fresh and new all the time. Mm -hmm. Why? Because our ancestors, their primary concern was finding food. So they find something, they pick it up, they smell it first, then they mm -hmm. taste a little bit, then they'll eat it. So they had to have a good sense of smell. Or if they're walking down the trail, they better be able to smell saber-toothed tiger and get out mm -hmm. of there quick, mm -hmm. right? Your sense of smell, but humans have not developed their sense of smell. We don't, but all the, all the equipment's there. The machinery is there. And the, this, the nerves of... directly back back to the brain without any screening, without any filters, none. And ask any neurologist, they'll say, yeah, yeah, that's true. And you ask them, well, why is that? And they'll say, well, uh, we don't really know. No, yeah, yes we do. It's because the survival of the species depended upon being able to smell saber-toothed tiger. So the, those, those smell nerves go right back to the memory center. Nowhere else. Mm -hmm. They go to the memory center called the hippocampus. Mm -hmm. So when you're losing your sense of smell, it's, it's the earliest marker that there's inflammation in your memory center killing off cells. Mm. It is, I, I, there are 17 studies that identify it as the earliest marker, called a biomarker, of preclinical Alzheimer's. Mm. The very earliest. Yeah. you're losing your memory because your hippocampus is so when you do the smell test if you score good great don't worry about it do it again next year do it once a year but if you score nine or less you then are going to ask the question what's the three-letter question why which sends you on the journey it may take six months to a year to learn everything that's causing the inflammation in your brain, the formaldehyde in the press board of the cabinets in the kitchen, the phthalates from the plastic lines and nail polish and plastic container. It, it may take you a while to learn, but you now are on the journey to learn mm -hmm. because every cell in your body wants to regenerate. Mm -hmm. You just have to stop growing gasoline on the fire and then mm -hmm. you grow more nerve cells. The fastest growing cells in the body are the olfactory nerves going back to the hippocampus. Mm. That's why the smell test is so cool. And it's yeah. very cheap. So That's you go great. To, you, you go to the doctor.com, the dr.com forward slash smell. And there it is. And I put a couple of videos there. Plus I put five studies there. So mm -hmm. you order the test. You do the test at home. If it comes back and it's not great, you go to your doctor and say, look, I downloaded some of these studies about smell being a, a early marker that I'm on the path to dementia. Mm -hmm. And if your doctor said, well, well, I don't know anything about that, but that's kind of interesting. Okay. Find another doctor for this purpose. You, you go to a functional medicine doctor like Dr. Downey, and they know what to do. They'll say, okay, we have to identify where the inflammation's coming from. Now, it's likely coming from some of the food you're eating and your environmental exposures, 247 pounds per person per day. Now you start to understand some of this bigger picture of how do you get healthy? And it goes all the way back to just one hour a week because you're going to be overwhelmed. Now, and you might do one hour twice a week. It's up to you. But the purpose of that message is so you don't get immobilized. Mm -hmm. yeah. That you understand. This is going to take some time. There may be a bunch of tests we're going to do, Mrs. Patient, but it's going to take some time. So that's I, awesome. I wanted to.
talk about that. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. And all I would add is that another hope I would have is because the conceptualization is there, the excitement, the interest, the person who can smell all 12 things says, this reminded me that I got to, I got to be, I got to preempt this, right? Right. Right. I got to right. protect that canary. And right. so, so, <laughs> right. so if you score 10 out of 12, you're okay, but wait a minute, 10 out of 12. All right. So something's close to the nine. Just not bad. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. That's right. That's yeah, right. awesome. And then your um, your last question was about um, our current um, concern with viral exposure. Um, our mentor, Dr. Jeffrey Bland, the founder of Functional Medicine, we had a, uh, some correspondence, uh, all the faculty at IFM, and uh, Jeff said, now everyone, just remember, this is a perfect example of a lifestyle disease. What does he mean by that? 85 to 90% of the people who are exposed to this virus never know it. They never know it. They have no symptoms whatsoever. Their immune system makes antibodies to this to protect them. They got natural immunization from the exposure, like we get vaccinations for measles and, you know, you go to Africa, you need vaccinations for yellow fever and whatever, right? Well, breathe in the virus, you make antibodies to the virus and you're fine. 85 to 90% of the people, five to 10% of the people get a slight fever, they get sore throat, they get a little diarrhea for a couple of days and then they're fine. And about 5% of the people, somewhere around that, they have to go to the hospital. And some of them are put in ICU and if they're put in ICU, if they're put on a respirator, the paper came out from the Journal of the American Medical Association in March that in New York, 5,624 people put on respirators, 88.9% of them die. You know, so why do you put them on respirators? But that's last resort when nothing else is possible. They've got no other tools that they can use. So the first group, they never knew that they were exposed, but they do the antibody tests and they've got antibodies. Great, way to go, your immune system's doing great. Don't worry about it. That's exactly what you want to have happen. You're protected, you're making antibodies right now. Mm -hmm. The second group, they got a little sick for a day or a couple of days and then they were fine and they've now got antibodies. Your immune system isn't cutting it completely. I mean, it had to rally uh, to get you up to speed and it was able to rally way to go, but take this as a message. You need to put some attention on your immune system. Mm -hmm. And the third group needs a lot more work. So how do you protect yourself during this time? I did a number of coffees with Dr. Tom on this topic. I did nine in a row every day uh, in late March, early April. And then I did three, I think it was three or four more once a week. They're all on Facebook, our doctor, the doctor.com Facebook page. You'll find our coffees there. They're all free for you. Um, but the basics, there's no question about the basics. So I want to talk about four things that there's no question and none of them cure this virus. Absolutely none of them, but they all help to support your immune system for anything that you're exposed to. Mm -hmm. The first one is vitamin D. Absolutely no question. There are so many studies that show the benefit to vitamin D. And of those 88.9% of the people that died in New York, they looked at the blood. Every single one of them had deficiencies of vitamin D. Mm, Every striking. single one of them. Yeah, yes. very striking. Yeah. So you want good vitamin D levels. And I've said for many, many years, if there's one blood test you're going to do every year that's part of a physical, do vitamin D. It's much more important than cholesterol, much more important. Now, there are some people with a family history and genetics that need to really be careful in their cholesterol. But for the whole group of people, vitamin D is much more important. And it, you, you can do a simple finger prick test. It's really easy. And... Uh, uh, it's inexpensive. You can see it at thedoctor.com. Just go to test. You see it there. You poke your finger. 
You put a drop of blood on the card, wait for it to dry, put it in an envelope, send it off. You've got the results within a week. Mm -hmm. so seven to 10 business days, you know, depending mm -hmm. on how busy the lab is. And you want your vitamin D level between 50 and 75 NG per ml. Now that's the US measurements. If you're out of the country, just go on Google and convert um, NG per ml to whatever yours is. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's 50 to 75. Yep, 50 to 75. And if you're not there, take some vitamin D. If that's where your level is, you're fine. You're fine. Don't worry about it. You're doing good with vitamin D. Just keep up what you're doing. The next one is vitamin C. Many, many studies have come out in this last six months period of those ERs uh, and those intensive care units. They're using IVs of vitamin C, a lot of vitamin C. Those people consistently are doing better than the ones that they don't use vitamin C with. Now, it's not mm. going to cure you by itself, but it's going to help your immune system. And at home, there's two ways that you can do vitamin D um, or vitamin C. One of them is called liposomal vitamin C. And you, you pump a little in your mouth and uh, it gets absorbed right away. And the other, there's powders and tablets. I personally like the powder. I take 8,000 milligrams every day. I wake up in the morning and in my two glasses of water, I put a scoop of vitamin C. That's 4,000 milligrams. And I do that twice. And I do that every day. I actually have a video of Dr. Linus Pauling. He's uh, the only man ever to win the Nobel Prize twice. There's one woman and one man. Dr. Pauling is the guy. And I have a video of him when he was 84 years old. Cute old guy, got a beret on, you know, a little black beret angled to the side, kind of cool gut looking guy. And he's being interviewed and he says, yes, yes, yes. Um, my wife and I take 18,000 milligrams of vitamin C every day. And when I get old, I'll take more. And you just have to laugh because, wait a minute, man, you're 84. <laughs> what, what, what do you consider old, right? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> 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 That's delightful. <laughs> that is. That is. So I take 8,000. And, you know, if, if I feel down, if I feel a little um, uh, under the weather, I'll double that easily. And there's a way of knowing how much vitamin C is good. It's uh, what we call the Pauline protocol. And you start uh, with a powdered vitamin C. And you, put, you take 1,000 milligrams in some water and swallow it down every waking hour. And you keep track during the day as you're doing this. And so let's see, let's say you got 10 doses in that day. Okay, everything's fine. And you do the same every day, every waking hour, keeping track of how many you're taking until you get loose bowels or a little bit of diarrhea. You say, okay, I took 12 doses today and I got diarrhea, okay? Then you take a day or two off, let your body relax to that. And then you take 75% of that dose. So if you took 12 doses, then the next day you take nine doses, mm -hmm. 1,000 milligrams every hour, nine times. And you stay at nine for as many days as it takes until you get a little loose bowels or diarrhea. Then you take a day or two off again. And then you take 75% of that dose. So if it was nine, then it'll probably be somewhere around six, six and a half and you take six, six and a half doses every day until you get a little loose bowels or diarrhea. And if you don't get loose bowels or diarrhea, that's the dose your body needs every day. Hmm. Because the, high, the highest concentration of vitamin C in the human body is in the adrenal glands, the mm -hmm. glands that handle the stress of life. Mm -hmm. And so the more stressed you are, the more stress you've been in life, the more raw material you need to make the hormones to deal with the stress. Mm -hmm. So that's the second thing. First is vitamin D. The second is vitamin C. The third is zinc. Now, this virus, it, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, there are five things. I said four, there are five. This virus, the way that it can get a hold in your body, if it's in your bloodstream or uh, 
uh, it really can't do anything. It's got to get inside your cell. When it gets inside your cells, then, and viruses don't reproduce, they shed. And that's how you get more viruses, is it sheds. What does that mean? It's got dandruff. And so a virus only gets dandruff inside the cell. Mm -hmm. If it's in the bloodstream, it doesn't shed. It's got to get inside the cell. That mechanism of the virus shedding is almost completely stopped, like the emergency break. Whoa, Nelly! Completely stopped by zinc. So if you have enough zinc inside your cell, the virus can't get dandruff. Mm -hmm. So even if it got inside your cell, which it shouldn't, and I'll tell you what to do for that in a minute, but even if it gets inside the cell, if you have adequate zinc inside your cell called intracellular zinc, it doesn't have dandruff and you're fine. You never have a problem. Now, so zinc in your bloodstream is good. So doing blood tests for zinc is good and all that, but it's not effective. The zinc's got to get inside your cell and it's not easy to get inside the cell. There are escorts, you know, escort services that get the zinc inside your cell from your bloodstream. They're called ionophores, a zinc ionophore. It's a great Scrabble word, ionophore. A and lot of points it, on that one. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of points on that one. <laughs> and uh, uh, one of the best zinc ionophores, actually it's ranked number five of all, and most of the top five are drugs, but a natural zinc ionophore is quercetin. Mm. And quercetin is part of the vitamin C complex. And you get that in citrus fruits or just go on Google and type in quercetin in foods, Q-U-E-R-E-C, Q-U-E-R-C-I-T-I-N, quercetin in foods. And print out the list of foods that are high in quercetin. So eat some olives, eat some capers. You know, there are many, many foods in there that you'll find. And you just have your family eat some of these foods on a regular basis, a couple, three, four times a week as part of a meal. You're getting mm -hmm. high levels of quercetin, which mm -hmm. escorts whatever zinc is in your bloodstream inside the cell. So if a virus gets inside the cell, it can't shed or it's greatly restricted in shedding. The last thing is, as you referred to earlier, the rainbow diet. Mm -hmm. The colors of the rainbow in your foods, the deep reds, like red raspberries, red beets, um, green broccoli, uh, purple cabbage, red tomatoes. The colors are called polyphenols. And many of these polyphenols, the way the virus gets inside the cell, the escort service for the virus to get inside the cell, there, there are catcher's mitts called receptor sites sitting on the outside of the cell. And the virus has an attraction to one particular catcher's mitt that escorts things inside the cell. And that catcher's mitt is called the ACE2 receptor. So if the virus gets a hold or falls onto an ACE2 receptor, it can get inside the cell. Polyphenols will sit in the ACE2 receptor, not allowing the virus to get inside the cell. Whereas the only place it can get dandruff and shed. Mm. So the more vegetables and the more fruits in your diet, for many, many reasons, blood sugar stability, cardiovascular health, brain function. Now for this current crisis that is questionable that we're in. But if you want protection, eat the rainbow diet, take some vitamin D, a little, some vitamin C, some zinc, and some quercetin. That <laughs> is the best protection. Now, none of that is going to cure a viral infection. I have to officially say that. None of it's going to cure that if you get sick, you make sure you see your doctor. Mm -hmm. Really important. Mm -hmm. right? right? But if you, if you want to know, how do I help 
make my immune system nice and strong so that I never know that I've been exposed to this virus. My body does its job all by itself. That's how you do it. That's great. So good talking with you today. I'm so appreciative and I'm so thankful that our listeners get to uh, go on this wonderful tour that you took us on. Just so illuminating. Thank you so much. Have a, have a great rest of your day, Dr. Robin. Thank you. Seaworthy exists for people to overcome their health challenges and be fully vital. Please consider subscribing, giving us a five-star review if we've earned it, and going to our website podcast tab for any questions or comments you'd like to share with us. Thanks.